Howdy, everybody, and welcome to day two of DrupalCon. I just want to remind everyone that there is a link to access uh, cart captioning. It's pinned in the chat, so make sure you get that if you need it. Uh, my name is Ron Northcutt, and I am the developer advocate at Acquia. I've been a Drupalist for quite a while. I won't say exactly how long, but I will say it's been since uh, Drupal 4.6, so you can do the math on that one. And it is incredibly cool and interesting and crazy that it's been 20 years of Drupal, and it just keeps getting better. I just found out we actually have over 2,200 register attendees this year, and about a third of them, I think, are like first timers. I mean, that is so incredibly cool. I can remember my first DrupalCon. I can remember every major new revision coming out. And honestly, I still get super excited about all of the cool new features and toys and great things that are going on. Uh, today is going to be a fantastic day. But speaking of Drupal memories, be sure to bring your favorite memory to Acquia's 20th birthday party for Drupal tomorrow from 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our booth is live throughout the conference. We've got a bunch of fun things going on, some cool lightning talks from our experts, general chat about whatever happens, like animals and pets and, and fun things. We've got a virtual photo booth, and we've got some trivia games coming up where you can test your skills against Drees, Gabor, Angie, Wim, all of the fun folks, so come on by. Now, Drupal has one of the most vibrant, diverse, and supportive communities in the entire world. And I was super excited when Dries first announced the decoupled menu initiative because it means we're going to be able to work more closely together to make the community even bigger by reaching out to decoupled apps and decoupled developers, JavaScript developers, etc. Now, this year at DrupalCon, along with the traditional content, we also get to focus on the strategic initiatives of the project. So we're going to start every morning with a keynote dedicated to one of those initiatives. And after today's keynote, you're going to have the opportunity to join the leads in a session room for a dedicated Q&A. So please save your questions till then, but bring them. There's also going to be a select number of sessions highlighted through the day that relate back to the decoupled menus initiative. And please be sure to join the mentored contribution later today from 1500 to 1900. So with that, it is my absolute pleasure to welcome a few members of the Decoupled Menus team to the stage. We have Batty uh, Breidert, we have Gabe Solis, Theodore Biadala, and Liam Hockley. Hello, thank you. Um, and welcome to our keynote uh, today about the Decoupled Menu Initiative. Uh, we are only going to be the three of us today. Uh, Theodor says hi, um, and he is hopefully watching uh, online in France at the moment. But I am calling here from Germany. So where are you, Gabe, now located? Uh, I'm in North Carolina. OK, and Liam, where are you? I'm coming here from sunny Los Angeles. Isn't it great that we can just be here together, even in all these different places? So yeah, we are going to start. That's yeah, pretty cool. Um, there is going to be a Q&A session happening after the keynote. So if you have any questions, please wait with them until then or, or write them down and we will try to keep track of them. So let's start. Um, the team that is uh, leading the initiative is uh, presented on this slide here. It's myself. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm located in Frankfurt, Germany. And I got the role of being an onboarding and a communication lead in the initiative. And that basically just means that I am helping others that want to participate and join the initiative to uh, be part of it. So if you have any questions, please come and uh, talk to me. Uh, Gabe is the initiative coordinator together with Theodor Biadala, uh, who is also a JavaScript core maintainer together with Sally Young. And we're going to tell you all about this uh, later in the, in the session. But we also have here with us Liam, and uh, he is the meetings and issues secretary and takes care of like documenting everything that we are doing, uh, helping to groom the issues and uh, yeah. But it's not just this group here. We also have a lot of other people who are helping and participating. And we decided to just name a few here from the last meetings where we have actually been active. We have been um, talking in the issue queue and I just, you know, make sure you clap them on the shoulder if you meet them or give them a virtual hug if you meet them. But all of them are going to be joining us in the uh, open social contribution area, or at least some of them. So, you know, if you see any of those, uh, they probably 
have been doing something in relation to the decoupled money initiative. Um, there's a lot of information on this slide. I'm going to be pasting the links uh, also in the chat later, but where to find us? So if you want to be part of the initiative and if you want to do something, then you can always find us on drupal.org. So we have a project there called the Coupled Menus Initiative, and there you can also find the issue queue that is like directly related to the initiative work. But we also have on, a, on Slack, under or Drupal Slack, under Decoupled Menus Initiative channel, uh, we have every Tuesday at 2 UTC time and 2 in 12 hours later, uh, a meeting on Slack. But that's gonna, that all happens online. So we just write uh, and talk about what is happening. And if you wanna be part of that, then you just come and join that Slack thread. But here at DrupalCon, we have been setting up a couple of meetings. Um, we have every day at 18.20, 20 minutes over six UTC time, we have a buff registered. So you can find us there here on the Hopin platform. You can also find us on Slack 24 seven, not all of us, but we are uh, from everywhere, <laughs> almost on the continent. So somebody's gonna answer. And of course, in the contribution area, we have set up a uh, a reception every single day so people can actually come and, and meet the team and start you know asking and participate that is on open social and last but not the least from my side um we did like lightning series uh, so we started to meet the community and record what is being done in the decoupled world of drupal and we have already done uh, four talks where you can take a look at them. I put in the bit.ly link there because the YouTube link was a little bit long. I'm also gonna add that in the chat later. But if you wanna learn something more about uh, the JSON API, GraphQL, Drugs, JX, JS, and the EC content, or just uh, listen to the initiative coordinators talk about a QA session, then go on YouTube. But we are also here to talk about what we are doing and not how to, how to connect with us. And Gabe, I think we can give it over to you. Yeah, thanks, Patty. Um, so I realize that many of you are probably uh, hearing about the Decoupled Menus Initiative for the first time. Uh, and maybe you did hear about it last year, um, but you're not really sure what's going on. So I wanted to give a brief overview of you know, our roadmap, what we're doing, why we're doing it, uh, and kind of how we got to the point we are at today. So last year, Dries suggested during his uh, keynote that the community should undertake a new initiative. Um, he proposed something called the GAS Menu Component Initiative. Uh, and we took that and we ran with it. And we went into the Drupal Ideas issue queue. Uh, and that's what you see over on the right here. We wrote a formal proposal for a new initiative. And that process uh, taught us a few things. We started to think about what problems we were trying to solve and how we were going to solve them. Uh, one of the first things we realized is that we're probably um, not necessarily trying to build a JavaScript component. Uh, that was really just a means to an end. We had two other more primary objectives, and that was one to you know, help Drupal embrace new and improved JavaScript practices, and then also to make Drupal a no compromises solution, um, even in a decoupled scenario. Uh, so that you can use Drupal when you're using things like React or Vue, or maybe even neither of those technologies in building a native app. So those are pretty big and ambitious goals. And it's not necessarily uh, clear how we're going to get from point A to B. And if we're going to succeed, we have to be able to pick you know, an ambitious yet achievable goal. And so the goal that Dries proposed was a JavaScript menu component. Uh, and we agreed that menus were a good a good feature to pick. Every site, every application usually has a menu, and it's really difficult to build um, menus in a decoupled scenario that are kind of manageable by content editors. But we realized that maybe shipping a, a menu component was kind of like asking to ship a truckload of bananas across the jungle. It's not really as straightforward as it seems. Uh, there are all these trees and rivers and mountains in your way. For example, how would Drupal.org publish uh, a component to NPM? You know, does the world really need another JS menu component? There are libraries out there like React Bootstrap that have their own menu components. Uh, 
Does Drupal even ship the necessary APIs to download menu data? Um, and then like, does the committer team have the expertise they need to, um, to have in order to maintain a JavaScript library that's part of core? So in other words, before we could ship that truckload of bananas through that jungle, we needed to plan and build a road. So how do you do that? How do you build a road? You know, first you need to, to survey it. Uh, you'll need to understand what, what the problem is, what the, the intricacies are. And for that, I'm gonna hand it over to Liam uh, to talk a little bit about the survey we conducted. Um, and you'll hear about him, that from, from him in just a second. After you you uh, you survey, you then have to <laughs> thanks, Patty. <laughs> you uh, you have to plan the way, right? You need to know uh, how you're going to tackle things, um, what challenges you're going to face, and how you're going to overcome them. So we you'll hear a little bit more later about how we overcame those challenges uh, and how we actually did our planning and and what we learned from that. And then after you are done planning, you actually have to clear the way through the jungle, right? You have to push uh, trees out of the way, move boulders. Uh, so we'll talk about how uh, we identified bo those boulders and moved them out of the way. And then finally, you do need to pave the way. And that's the last phase in the phase that we're in now. And I think we'll have some very exciting things to share with you a little bit later. So now, actually, over to you, Liam. Yeah, thanks, Gabe. Um, so yeah, we conducted a survey um, to help us guide the initiative. This was inspired by you know a lot of similar surveys within the JavaScript community and and outside of it. Um, we we did we had 133 respondents over a two week period, and we obtained lots of valuable information that really helped guide us in the decision making process that followed. Um, so here are a few interesting results that we found during the survey. Um, so the first thing we found was that there's a surprising high amount of users that were building custom components in order to, um, to, to work with the JSON API. Uh, we found this is surprising because there's quite an abundance of, of JavaScript frameworks out there. Um, and so we were, we were sort of wondering why that was a thing. And we came to the conclusion that it was really just the nature of the flexibility that's required in order to build a, uh, a JavaScript um, component that works and plays nicely with JSON API. Um, and then following that, we also found that uh, documentation is incredibly important to our users. And because of that, we also wanted to know what does the what does good documentation look like, and we looked at a lot of alternatives. And through that process, we also um, were able to kind of get some ideas that we were then put forward in the survey. And chief among them was definitely code snippets, and this has really been helping us in order to kind of just determine what we need out of a documentation platform. Um, and uh, and that's. Yeah, again, that's helping us in the future decision-making process. Um, um, the next thing with, that we found from the survey was that um, the menu data, what, what, what constitutes a good set of data for the user, um, for the end user? And there were two big things that stuck out to us from the survey. Uh, one of them was that we need a menu hierarchy. This is for things like drop downs to make that, to facilitate that kind of um, workflow. Um, but we also, um, because of the global nature of Drupal, um, which is a beautiful thing, we also there was a big desire for this to be multilingual. So we need to be able to not only have the data in the right format, but also in the right language, spoken language. Um, so these were some big things we found on the survey that we thought were Really interesting, and there's a full article um, in the in the link there. And uh, turn it back to Gabe. Thanks, Liam. Yeah. So, what were uh, the planning and clearing phases? What did we do during those? Um, well, we understood that there were some big changes, you know, that we had to make to uh, the Drupal community, to Drupal.org, to Drupal itself. Um, and what this initiative does is, is, is it, it gave us an opportunity to figure out um, how we're going to manage JavaScript, uh, which is increasingly part of um, the development workflow of web developers all around the world. 
So we had to realize that there are changes that we need in core governance. There are changes to Drupal.org tooling. Uh, and there are changes beyond Drupal.org that we needed to make. The first of those um, took us a while to get ready. We need to, uh, to understand you know, how we were going to ship a library, what the release policies needed to be, um, where the code would be hosted. You know, would we host that code on Drupal.org? Would we host it on GitHub? Would we use GitLab? Um, who would have what responsibilities? You know, if we were to start shipping uh, module or JavaScript libraries that come as part of core, but they're not necessarily part of the core repository, who would be responsible for accepting commits and reviewing commits? How would that look like? And so we looked around and we tried to figure out um, what the community did. And we implemented uh, an RFC that we learned from the Ember community uh, and from the IETF. And we came up with a proposal for how to manage standalone JavaScript packages. And it brought everybody together, focusing on that problem uh, and really exploring the depths of it, making sure that we all understood one another uh, and that we could come up with a solid plan to go forward. One of the things that came out of that was that we didn't have the JavaScript, the JavaScript expertise that we needed on the core team and that we would need somebody to review those. And so we're very excited that out of that, we got two new core committers, Sally Young and Theodore Biadala. They're going to bring in JavaScript expertise to uh, the core committer team that we didn't have before. Uh, and I think that's really going to uh, accelerate our use of JavaScript. Another big change, uh, and we were very happy to work with the Drupal Association on this, is that we needed some updates to the Drupal.org infrastructure, uh, particularly Drupal.org tooling. One of the things that came out of that was that we needed a different project type. On Drupal.org, you know, all we have are modules uh, and projects and distributions, but we don't have things that really don't expect to be PHP. If you wanted to release a JavaScript library or host a JavaScript library on Drupal.org, you'd need something else. Um, so you'd need something to be able to test that. You would need to have something that could push to NPM. Um, but beyond that, you might be able to have things that aren't modules and aren't distributions that still are PHP. So maybe even Drush could come on to Drupal.org once again. So what else did we get? We worked with the DA to work on GitLab CI. Now with those general project types, you're able to do JavaScript testing and even publish to NPM. So right now that's uh, that's just in kind of a beta phase, it's not widely available, uh, but we hope that it will be soon. And finally, outside of Drupal.org, we have some really exciting news as well. We published for the first time a JavaScript library to NPM. It's the it's called the Drupal Once library, and it's a replacement for um, jQuery.once. But it may seem a little bit trivial because all it does is do something once. Um, on a page, but I think it's actually pretty extraordinary. For the first time, Drupal as a community has published code off of Drupal.org outside the Drupal community so that the JavaScript ecosystem can consume it. Uh, and there's another thing to really realize here. Drupal.once is a core library. For all of Drupal's history, the 20 years, Drupal.core, or sorry, Drupal.org hosted Drupal the project, the CMS. Now we have Drupal dot or Drupal core projects, plural. So Drupal.once is as much part of core as Drupal the CMS is. And I think we're going to see a lot of exciting things come out of that. So to quickly summarize, Drupal now has an official way of managing JavaScript libraries um, and people with the dedicated time and expertise to work on it. Drupal.org has the necessary infrastructure to manage JS libraries. And Drupal.core is now more than a single Git repository. It's an ecosystem of core maintained code, which people can use whether they're part of Drupal or not. So we did the planning, we did the clearing. What's the paving phase? That's where we are right now. And so since we've built that road, now we're able to actually ship that JavaScript menu component, that thing that we thought was a bit too ambitious. But since we have a road, 
we can ship a lot more than that. And we have. We've shipped a React menu component, a Svelte component, and even a gener generic uh, web component using vanilla JS. So where we thought we were maybe too ambitious to start with just focusing on one menu component, in fact, we've shipped three. But it doesn't stop there. Looking forward, I'm really excited that people are going to take advantage of the infrastructure we've worked on and brought, uh, brought to a fruition. And I think we're going to see some really cool innovation. It doesn't have to be limited just to menus. For example, you could build a menu component. You could build a login component or a layout component. You can start to make decoupled Drupal easier no matter what the context and what the use case is and make it really no compromises. And you can also start to branch out and really share your work and your expertise uh, with the JavaScript ecosystem as a whole. And so we have an invitation for you. And I'm going to turn it back over now. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, so uh, we are going to be hosting a hackathon. Um, and there's some information here on the slide that kind of gives you some um, a little rundown of what we're doing here. So basically, as Gabe just mentioned, there are already some uh, components, which is really exciting. And they are general projects. And general projects are now available. And we have them as um, we have uh, several issues specifically for this week. And we will be hosting a hackathon with, that will be on the opensocial.site. Uh, the link's right there on the slide. But we also have some boff rooms uh, at the end of all the sessions on each day from today, tomorrow, uh, and Friday. Uh, we're also going to be um, uh, having like kind of like an introduction room, and then that will help, you know, just to guide you into the right um, direction there. Uh, so what's available? We've got a JSON API endpoint that you can use. Um, anyone can use. It's public. And you can use it to create any kind of component. Uh, we don't yet have a, a native view component that is something that can be implemented. And you can even create a, a general project right now for that, if you wish. Uh, we also have React, Svelte, and web component projects with issues, like I said. And uh, we encourage you to participate. And it uh, doesn't matter what level you are, we are welcoming everybody. And I'll turn it back to Baddy. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so. It is correct. Uh, we are going to be, this is all going to take place in open social. And, and hackathon means that, you know, we either invite you to create a new component that connects to the endpoint that is available, which is on the slide that I showed before. Let's go back there. Here's the link. Maybe we can add that to the chat as well. Um, or if you just want to work on the components that have already been done, then we have the people who are behind those uh, components. They are also participating and going to be with us every day where we are going to have like a reception on open source, on the open social contribution site between 7 and 9 o'clock UTC, which is uh, in the middle in the time zone. So you can calculate either forward or backwards, depending on where you're located. Um, and then the idea is on Friday that if you have been building something or doing something, then it would be great if uh, you could come on Friday and demo it. So all this information is also available on the open social site. But we also, of course, want to see it. And then um, we just decided that we, we would maybe just like give out some prizes or you know maybe we have somebody to give out prizes. <laughs> However, we're going to do that. Um, we just really want to see how you, you know, what your ideas are. Um, so please come and join us there. And please also come to our Q&A session. That is going to be directly after this session. But there have been, though, because we have five minutes now, um, there are a couple of questions that I've been seeing in the uh, on Hopin, because we are, you know, one, one is from Richard. Uh, Alan, is general projects available in Drupal.org now? The answer is yes. So if you go to the issue queue, you will be able to see there all the way to the right, there is something called general projects. And I think, what do we have now? 12 projects, I think, already in there? Once is uh, one of the projects? Yeah, at least um, at least 12. They're growing. Yeah. It's, it's, I've kind of lost track. 
And just like Liam said before, or Gabe said before, we don't have a Vue.js component yet. And there are other JavaScript frameworks that where we are missing a component. So go for it. Uh, and if you want to find other people to help you, then of course, uh, come to the contribution. So there is also a question from James Gilliland. Uh, can the policies learned from published uh, external JS, JS libraries be extended to publish composer libraries out of Drupal core? It's a really interesting question. Um, I don't think anybody has thought about that, but I, I think we, we could probably write up maybe a new RFC that talks about uh, you know, the, the things that we have in Drupal core, specifically the components namespace, uh, and see if we can learn what we've, we've you know, agreed upon for JavaScript libraries and apply those to PHP? It's, it's a good question. And maybe we can discuss that also maybe in the Q&A. I was hoping that we could maybe there uh, also maybe invite people in. I don't know if that's going to work out, but uh, depending on, on what platform we are. Josh Miller is asking, will we ever require a specific JS front end or is the plan to keep it 100% open? Yeah, I, I, uh, I think really, I mean, the plan is never, you know, nothing, anything that has to be set in stone. But I think that we've already demonstrated that we're kind of open to branching out and that this ecosystem will hopefully, you know, spread and grow um, just because of the nature of all these different solutions. And what we found in the survey is all these little custom solutions. It, it might, you know, be beneficial for us to remain open, at least in the short term. Um, until something, maybe something comes along someday that is very much standard. But I think at this point, it does seem to me at least, and I can't speak for everyone, uh, that we need to be flexible um, and that really this initiative is focused around just making the data easier to work with so it is much more future-proof. Maybe Gabe has and some thoughts on that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the decoupled menus initiative. Uh, decoupling, you know, Kind of the promise there is that you can uh, you can attach it to any front end that you want. So I think it's maybe a little counterintuitive that we would well not counterintuitive but just going counter to our our stated goals to actually pick one JavaScript uh, framework and go from there. I think that um, you know if I look at the Drupal.org ecosystem right now and the Drupal module ecosystem, we have uh, many themes. We have competing themes. Um, we have modules like Superfish, which are you know one menu implementation. We have the menu block module. So I'm not I'm not saying it's 100% out of the question, um, but for now I just I don't think it's necessarily on our on our uh, horizon. It's a good question though. And we have <laughs> at least room for one more. So Kevin Reynan um, is asking GPL 2.0 and 3.0 licensing is less popular in JavaScript than other licensing options like MIT license and Apache 2.0. Will the DA consider additional licensing options for general projects on Drupal.org? Um, so I can, as a, as a board member of the Drupal Association, uh, I think this uh, I think that's a, a good question. <laughs> But I think it is probably more uh, in the direction of asking also Dries this question. So I think that bring that question to Dries on his Q&A, which is happening directly after his Dries note tomorrow. And, you know, there also the DA is going to be. So probably, um, you know, I think that we are maybe not in the position here to to uh, have, have an answer on that, nor, nor am I aware of any conversations about that. So yeah, I'm sorry that I can't answer that at the moment. But bring that, please, to Dries uh, tomorrow. Um, there's, uh, I think we're almost up for the time, but there is, uh, please come to the Q&A session. So especially those who are uh, new to Drupal or new to DrupalCon or, you know, come to the session and think about, like, we can help you to orientate. We need also not just people who can code. Uh, I'm a good example of somebody in the initiative that is definitely not coding at all, but I'm helping out with uh, other things. And we need help with documentation. We need help with, uh, you know, creating all these uh, issues and updating and, and so on. So please come and join us in the Q&A just directly now. And thank you, Gabe and Liam, for giving us the update. 
and we hope to see you all in the contribution area. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Bye. Yeah, thank you. Thank yep. you.